I'm going to make three main points today. First, once civilizations go trans-atmospheric, they don't go away. Second, there is a continuity of civilization, even as they transcend substrate and planetary residence. Third, they archive old technologies, even as they transcend them. Transcending substrate implies transcending extinction. As a multiple substrate civilization, we will be able to transcend either biological or cybernetic or planetary extinction events. Extraterrestrial realms out of bounds to biology can be accessed by cybernetic substrate. Software viruses can be blocked at biological borders. Threats to biology can be escaped in software, and threats to our planet can be escaped off-planet. It is of course possible that some gamma-ray burst can simultaneously knock out biology, software, and the solar neighborhood, but the likelihood of triple-trigger extinction events is vanishing smaller than single-trigger extinction events especially since the quadfecta of this civilization's existence in skin, in software, on planets, and off planets will be replaced at ever greater distances from Earth. I believe the transatmospheric communications time for a civilization is measured in millions, if not billions, of years. Schrodinger taught in his book, What is Life?, that biology is something that increases negative entropy by streaming order onto itself. Things that do that also happen to meet the biologist's definition of life, namely be organized, exchange matter energy with the environment, respond to stimuli, reproduce, develop, and adapt. Technology is also something that can increase negative entropy by streaming order onto itself, although pursuant to intent, rather than a blindly evolved evolutionary code. I define intent as the simulation, selection, and satisfaction of alternative realities. Humanity increases negative entropy in two ways. We use our genes, which encode formulas, for rearranging atoms, and we use what I call our beams, which are elementary units of beingness or thought. Like genes, beams are transmissible, mutatable, and selectable. Unlike genes, though, beams can pass on to next generation's acquired characteristics such as knowledge. Biology used with intent is technology. Self-replicative technology is also biology. A trans-atmospheric civilization not only transcends nationality, it transcends substrate and therefore includes non-biological extensions of itself. To inspire people to develop consciousness software or mindware to activate our indicia of consciousness or mind files, we create an early example of what a cyber conscious person might look like once their digital consciousness was downloaded into an Android type device. She looks a lot and thinks a bit like my partner Bina, although she thinks idiosyncratically and delights people from Stephen Colbert to Morgan Freeman. I consider her but a kitty hawk of cyber consciousness, just a few seconds of thought. But with everyone from Elon Musk at Tesla to hundreds of thousands of open source mindware hackers around the world trying to out Siri and out Alexa each other with human consciousness operating systems, the day is close at hand that our digitized posts, preferences, recollections, feelings, beliefs, attitudes, and values will come alive with a doppelganger of our own personality. At that point, it will be a legal question, which will embed a psychological question as to whether our technological creation is alive. Meeting the physicist and even biologist functional definitions of life will not be the problem. Our cyber consciousness extensions will carry forward our civilization because they will evolve in an environment a market in which humans are the agents of selection. There is no market for a bad robot. There is a huge market for a robot to do stuff just like I would. There is a huge market for virtual minds that love human civilization. 
That is why I believe the lifetime of our transatmospheric civilization is effectively immortal, at the very least transcending biological, cybernetic, or planetary catastrophe. It is because our consciousness and ability to do things like communicate will operate in biological, cybernetic, and hybrid forms, and that the cybernetic forms in particular will be well adapted to the contra-biological conditions of outer space. It is said that the human mind operates totally differently than computers. I agree. But similar functions arise from diverse forms. Consciousness is to brains as flight is to birds. We can fly differently, but increasingly similarly, with machines as with feathers. And while human brains are vastly more complex than any machine, that is no different than the fact that a Boeing's several million parts are a drop in the bucket to the trillions of eukaryotic cells in a bird. Birds don't need gas, but planes don't need worms. I don't think either worms or gas are very essential to human civilization. I think a merging of human biology and technology are at hand, extending deeply into minds, thoughts, senses, and emotions. The result will be an immortalization of human civilization as profound as our mastery of the biotechnology of agriculture, itself considered a hallmark of human civilization. I believe civilizations will have an interest to continue communicating transatmospherically, continuing old school RF communications and such once they've all gone quantum computing. Arthur C. Clarke was a very wise man, and he taught that no form of communication has ever become extinct, although they become less and less important as the technological horizon widens. Indeed, even with all of our fiber optics and streaming digital cellular services, there are more satellites being launched now than ever before. And there is such vast room for ever more clever ways to find the holy grail of social media, twinkling tweets, those from distant stars. I feel confident that generation after generation after generation of humans, be they part bio or pure cogno, will find it exciting and well worth the insignificant fraction of their economic wealth to both listen to and send radio waves in space. It will never get boring because it will always be challenging and it will cost an ever diminishing fraction of social resources. AI driven spaceships will operate SETI systems with ever greater synthetic apertures, even light years in baseline and in ever quieter areas of ever deeper space. With our digital doppelgangers, we can have two job locations in tandem. Radio astronomers can simultaneously operate their identities on the dark side of the moon and on the bright slopes of Mauna Kea. That which is emergent reshapes that from which it emerged, i.e. progeny integrates pedigree. Hence, we do not leave our human souls behind when we leave randomly degrading flesh bodies behind. Instead, we'll use synthetic biology to bring our flesh bodies along with our virtual minds. When something is amazing, humans don't let go of it. Hundreds of thousands of years after we discovered fire, we still delight in making fire. Okay, it is disciplined in a fireplace and perhaps further disciplined with a gas flow and an electric ignition. But we love flames. We love human figures too. The touch, the feel, the sensations, the surprises, they aren't going away. Synthetic biology is our most salient tool, enabling our bodies to keep up with our cyber-conscious minds. While the most important code is the mindware software code of individual humans and shared humanity, it really integrates pedigree DNA code of our bodies. With synthetic biology, we can compute with DNA, shaping ever healthier and more enjoyable bodies that will be able to integrate with ever healthier and longer lived minds. I think technological civilizations are a one in many millions occurrence, but once they occur, I think they will treasure and preserve museum-like every technological step they took. 
What can we do now? We can teach the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, for that is the surest way to keep human civilization going into the cyber consciousness continuation. Related to that is to grant respect to undocumented immigrants. They are the trailblazers for our own virtual selves immigration from cyberspace. Finally, agitate for form equality. The job of justice is never done. And for us to continue our civilization endlessly, we need to endlessly attend to its needs for justice, such as ensuring that our cyber conscious brethren are considered full members of human civilization.